Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this fine day of Lent. I don't know, did we have the third one already? Working our way towards Easter, turning, turning back, finding ways to repent and believe the gospel in the midst of a troubled world. There are those who are sometimes among us who have been visiting some fairly regularly, and we are very grateful. There's no pressure for you to join the church, but there is an invitation to join the church. So any of you that have been coming that haven't maybe decided, or maybe you're thinking about it, or I don't know, want to just talk about it, get to know each other better, get to know me better, or I don't know. We, um, the Sunday before Palm Sunday, April 3rd, we're planning just a little get-together after church for those folks, and I got a little something to give you before then if I can, and um, so please see me after the service today. I'll be out near that door somewhere. We're, um, Elizabeth and I will be away next Sunday. We're making good on a Christmas present we gave to our daughter's pre-COVID that just kept getting postponed. So it's come up this week. It's a crazy semester, and things will settle down again, right? They do sometimes. How are you all? Celebrations or concerns to share with the bunch? Glad to see that, David. Sharon, hang on just a second. Don's got a microphone for you so we can hear you. Okay, I just want to remind everyone that Phoebe Circle is Tuesday at 9.30, and Faith Bible Study is Tuesday at 1 o'clock, and both in the fellowship hall here. And then everybody's been so good about handing me money to buy stuff for the personal care kits, and I've been buying a lot, and I've got more money again, so I'll be shopping some more. <laughs> so we're doing good, but it's really wonderful. Thank you. And the personal care kits go through Lutheran World Relief to folks in need. So, yeah, see Sharon if you have any questions or donations on that front. Thanks be to God that we can gather and worship God. Let us do that. I invite you to rise as you are able. And Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, forgiving God, we confess that we have to relax and rest spiritually and to pretend to take pride that we have arrived when in fact we have only just begun the journey. Forgive us, we pray, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that thus nourished we may be able to continue on the long and sometimes treacherous path to holiness and unity with you. In the name of our guide and companion, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, God, Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promises and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and glory and praise through Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God, 
Your kingdom is broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. And join me as we bounce back and forth on Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content, as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud. And all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual flock that followed them, spiritual rock that followed them. They were the flock. The rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example. And they were written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. And he will not let you be tested beyond your strength, but with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galilee, Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the others? Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, 
But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree. Still, I find none. Cut it down. Why should I be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Be seated. We can kind of identify with that gardener with green popping up out of the soil nowadays. And I think we're all ready for spring. Our Lenten theme is leave the old life behind, repent and experience new life in Christ. When we think of Lent, we think of it as a journey of self-reflection. As a Christian, it's a journey that we take as Christians every year. And in the midst of current affairs, how do we respond in a Christ-like manner? The scriptures throughout this Lenten season point to the mission of a higher calling a higher calling of faithful living. How many times have we heard or felt it's not fair? Life is not fair. No, it is not. All of us can relate to some occasion reflecting on this statement. Years ago, Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote a book, I think it was around 1980, that was entitled, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? He wrote this after his 12-year-old son died from a rare genetic disorder. In his book, Rabbi Kushner says, we ask the wrong question when we say, why? Instead, we need to ask, how do I respond now that this has happened. How do we respond now that this event happened to me? Well, the scripture lessons each allude to this today. The psalmist in the desert thirsts for God and asks for God's help. The psalmist knows that in the past, God has helped him and has been a constant presence. So again, the psalmist turns to God <laughs> Again, the psalmist turns to God for help in a particular situation. In Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he is recalling Jewish history. He does that a lot as we read his letters throughout the New Testament. He is reminding his Jewish audience of the temptations their ancestors faced in the wilderness. Their impatience, in their impatience, they turned away from God, being God, and worshipped idols. Their behavior was more self-centered than God-centered. Today we call this self-centeredness narcissism. By turning away from God, the ancestors in the wilderness engaged in sexual misconduct. Sounds like reckless behavior we hear about today with human trafficking pornography, and other such things. It was Jewish belief at the time of Jesus that bad things happen to people because of their sin. And we've seen that in other parables. Some of this still continues today when something bad happens and you'll hear someone say, oh, it's God's will. Uh-uh. No, God does not cause bad things. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus says, no. Jesus acknowledges life is unfair. It's unpredictable. Therefore, believers are to repent as one never knows when life will be cut short. 
Jesus is telling, is telling his listeners and us that we are all sinners. Unless sinners turn back to God, they will end up dead like their ancestors or like the people of the Siloam Tower. Life happens and it's not always easy. This past week, the news carried reports that, that the war in Ukraine is getting worse. Hospitals, shelters, schools are being bombed. Reports of a car accident in West Texas where six people were killed as a result of a head-on collision. There are natural disasters, an earthquake in Japan, in floods and tornadoes in our country, fires in Texas, and various parts of our country and world are experienced some form of natural disaster. These events are not controlled by God. God does not control all events. God created us in human freedom. This is part of the Reformed tradition of both Presbyterians and Lutherans. Human freedom. God does not create war, climate change, speeding vehicles. Our way of living may lead to consequences such as war, accidents, etc. However, our God is a God of another chance. Jesus talks and teaches about God's mercy. Hence the call to repentance. Do you make a mistake? Do you trip up? We all do. It's part of being human. My husband would remind me of that several times. <laughs> As Christians, though, we own up to our sins and we confess them. That's why we have a prayer of confession in every worship service. It's to remind us to wipe the slate clean by confessing where we have fallen short in the eyes of God. And through God's mercy, we are given another chance. The parable of the fig tree is one we've heard from childhood, and it illustrates this lesson. Do some self-tending, some pruning, fertilizing, confession, repent, and begin anew. Do this to experience new or renewed life in Christ. I have shared with you oftentimes, this has been a blessing for me to serve you. The scripture lessons during Lent have caused me to reflect more deeply as I face difficult battles in my personal life. It has taken me several weeks to come to the realization that I need to totally turn to God and let the chips fall where they may. Bad things happen, but it is not up to me to choose what happens. It is up to me to choose how to respond to those things. No, it is not easy, but by doing this, I am finally experiencing some inner peace that was lacking. It is something I find I must do daily. Sometimes I have to do it more than once a day to remind myself God is in charge. God is the final authority. I believe this is what Jesus is calling folks to do when he says, repent, stop, rethink your life and remember your relationship with God. Don't abuse the mercy of God, but trust and obey. We'll sing that hymn soon. Trust and obey God's word. Hear what God is calling you to do. God give, like the fig tree, God will give you and me another chance. When I did hospital chaplaincy work, I visited many patients who considered their hospitalization a wake-up call. Many times I had some real serious conversations with patients, listening to their stories. I'm sure Pastor Dave, or 
All right. <laughs> I told you it was one of those days. Pastor Steve <laughs> could tell you the same thing in his work with hospice. But basically, the storyline went something like this, and, and I suspect you've heard this too, whoever you are. <laughs> it was one of neglect. They neglected to maintain contact with their spiritual life and faith. Several times I did what we call in the Presbyterian Church a renewal of baptism, which is a call to remember the vows taken at baptism and respond accordingly. It is not a rebaptism, it's a call to remember. It was more, when I looked at the service, it was more of a call for repentance, a change of heart. And this is what Jesus is telling the people in his day and us. Repent, change your heart. Life is fragile, be prepared. God is constantly calling us to remember the teachings of scripture and to trust and obey. Use this Lenten season to renew your faith story. You all have a faith story. Leave the old ways and the old life behind and experience a new life, a renewal life in Christ. Yes, we trip and fall into old patterns. It happens. So what do you do when that happens? Get up, take responsibility for the sin, confess it, renew your faith, and go forward into a new day, a new way. Many, many years ago, the I don't know if it was the original Anne of Green Gables, but it was one I watched in the 80s. She was always getting in trouble. Anne was a, an orphan that was taken in by a bachelor brother and sister. And she was always making mistakes. And she finally her line became, ah, tomorrow is a day with no mistakes. That was her way of renewing to go forward. Tomorrow, I will make no mistakes. Like the psalmist, we'll be feel times when we're out in the wilderness or in the desert, and we'll thirst for God's reassuring presence. The wilderness of life is a journey that takes many turns, as all of us know. Know that God goes with you and with me. New parents, and many of you can appreciate this, new parents are often excited with the arrival of a new child, only to realize when they get home the awesome responsibility they now face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One father wrote, when he got home with his wife and new baby, he went into the bathroom and cried. Haven't we all been some, in some type of life situation we felt overwhelmed with the changes and challenges confronting us. The COVID pand pandemic has been such a challenge. Church life now extends to the online version, thank goodness. Rather it be YouTube, Zoom, or any other number of things, programs. It's in this time period, this is a good time to consider how are we going forward to conduct ministry in such a ta changing time as this? No, life is not fair. Bad things happen. God is willing to give each of us another chance, another chance to grow and to be nourished through Christ. The parable of the fig tree reminds us that we are not being written off but rather we are being given another chance, an opportunity to reshape our lives and to follow a different path to repent. We may feel tired. We may be wrung out. We may feel as though we, like the fig tree in the parable, have run out of steam. But let us recognize that second chance that we are being offered through God's mercy. Let us allow ourselves to be tended, nurtured in the faith, 
in order that we might fulfill our calling to blossom and be fruitful. My dear Christian friends, we need to recognize that we are a holy people of God in this place at this time. It's our responsibility to step outside our comfort zones and do God's work. We are called to pray, to serve, to fight injustice, to bring hope, to bring new life. We are called to be God's agents through our prayers, our words, and deeds, calling all to abundant life. Our community, our county and state are facing a challenge of the reemergence of white supremacy group. As Christians, we need to stand for justice and human rights for all. The bishop joined with other faith leaders earlier this month, and I believe there's a letter out on the bulletin board, to condemn the white supremacy rally that was held in Hayden. And they ask others to stand with the church, both through the Lutherans and other denominations, to promote that peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Difficult as it may be, we can pray for those filled with such hate that they may come to know another way, the Christ's way. Another chance is available to them and to us all. In Jesus' name, I pray this will be so. May we all experience a fresh and renewed life in Christ this Lenten season. Amen. <clears throat> With one voice, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. <coughs> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the 
of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy One, we pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, mission developers, church councils, committee chairs, all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, for the health of this planet, for the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change, merciful God. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society, merciful God. For those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, for all in need of healing, those on our prayer list, all those to whom bad things are happening this day, those on our hearts and minds this morning, and those, Lord, known only to you. Merciful God. For the advocacy efforts of this congregation, and for those whose faith leads them to speak difficult truths and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Merciful God. Change hearts, O oh gracious God. Ours, those in the news around the world who seem to choose hate over love. Fertilize us, dear Lord, that we might turn and grow Renew in you, merciful God. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Find a way to share that peace with someone near you. Some famous theologian said, if the only prayer we ever offer is thank you, that will be sufficient. Let's take a moment to consider what we are thankful for.
Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom and with you the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> this is the mission we share in Christ's name. To praise God, nurture faith, and serve all. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. To God.